So the first thing that we need to look at, and I mentioned it um, in, in some of your considerations, is your codec list. So uh, the first step before you start building the SIP trunks or the trunk group is to go in and make sure that you have proper codec list built in the system. Uh, as, as you can see, uh, you manage those from, from Shortail Director, from the call control, and then go to codec list. Uh, and the ones that we, we recommend are the PCMU slash 8000, which is um, it's just another name for G711. Uh, then also add the uh, the G729. So name those whatever you want, save them. We we typically recommend uh, a, a step more on the codec list. We typically recommend for all of our customers to have a two different codec lists: one with G711 first, one with G729 first for intra and inter-site calling. If you have bandwidth considerations, if you don't, if, if you have a you know, one gig pipe everywhere or 100 meg pipe everywhere, then we typically recommend 711 as first choice regardless. Uh, so once our codec lists are, are built, then you need to go to the site. And, and keep in mind that any site that's going to be making SIP calls or receiving SIP calls, um, you, you need to do this for each one. So of course you're going to start with your headquarters site. Uh, so we, we open the site from the director, go down and specify uh, where I've under, under the bandwidth section, number one is going to be intra-site, number two is going to be inter-site. Um, the, the third one is the facts and, and modem calls, the, the codecs that you specified for those. Uh, the other thing that you'll want to consider here is, is make sure that you have the value defined for mission control bandwidth and make sure that that's high enough. Because what the short-tail system is going to do, if that's set to zero or if, say it's just set to, to 10K, then you're probably only going to be able to get one or two calls uh, to, to go out of that site, in either a SIP trunk or a site-to-site -site basis. Because what Shortail does with that is it says, okay, this is how much bandwidth I have available to make calls in and out of this site. And if I exceed that, then block calls. Don't allow any more new calls to, to be established. So once those are set up for all of your sites, uh, then we're going to go uh, and, and look at a SIP trunk uh, device or SIP trunk switch, if you will, to, to house your SIP trunking. Uh, and again, this can be either a virtual uh, trunk uh, using VMware or it can be a physical trunk. And uh, the list was of all the different switches was a little bit earlier. Um, The, the things that you'll want to make sure that you check on that once you build the switch itself is uh, to, to specify how many trunks you want uh, to, that switch to support and also how many uh, media proxies you want it to support. And those are done with either the drop downs or with the, uh, the built-in capacity fields. There are a couple of the switches such as the T1K and the 220T1 that instead of doing the drop downs, there's a check box that says enable um, 20 or like for the T1K, it's, it's, it says enable 20 SIP trunks with media proxy. You just check that one box and hit save and it takes care of all of it for you. Uh, so once we have that set up, we're going to go and we're going to do our uh, SIP profiles. Um, the SIP profiles handle some of the uh, feature, uh, like the forward and refer capabilities of the system. Um, it's the base level before you get into the session border controller. And typically there's an app note, uh, or you can get the information from the provider if there's not already an app note on the Shortel site uh, for, for your specific provider that tells you which SIP profiles that we need to enable. Uh, there's some that come pre-built in the system. Um, matter of fact, the list that you see right there is the list that comes pre-built in the Shortel system. Um, if we need to create a new one, then uh, you would go into the SIP profiles from director, name it. Um, specify the actual parameters that you want um, and again we would usually get that information from an app note or from the provider themselves uh, and then save that that list uh, so now we've got the the preliminary setup uh, completed and we're going to build the actual SIP trunk route uh, or the SIP trunk group should I say 
So from director, we're going to go to trunks and then trunk groups. We're going to specify the site that's going to house the physical equipment for those SIP trunks or the virtual equipment, should I say. The, uh, then select that we want a SIP trunk and say go. Uh, oh, and I, I did skip. So for our examples, our examples here, this was a uh, screen capture of a level three uh, SIP trunk and trunk group that we built for, for our customer. So um, most of these, if you've built any type of PRI trunking before, most of the fields in this are going to be pretty familiar to you. Uh, the key differences you'll notice will be the uh, the drop down for the profile. That's where you were going to select that profile that we built earlier, or if we're using one of the ones that was pre-canned in the short tail system. Uh, you're also going to, from here, specify the number of digits that you're expecting to see coming in from your CO. Uh, with most SIP providers, that's 10, which uh, you know most PRI trunking, uh, you're either going to be three or four or five digit, you know, matching whatever your extension list is or your extension length is, but with, with most SIP providers, they, uh, they outpulse 10 digits by default, unless you ask for that to be different. Uh, and then we're going to go through a lot of the same setup as you would for a PRI as far as if you, if you want to have DNS, if you want to have DIDs, we would enable those just like you would for a PRI. Um, the, the other thing that you typically always want to enable for SIP trunking is the tandem, allows tandem trunking field. Um, that way if you have calls that are coming into site A and then need to go to site B or transfer back out, it's allowed. Uh, so the next place we're going to go is down, you know, we'll scroll down the page and we'll go to the outbound section. Uh, from there we're going to specify things. Uh, the first thing, of course, is the access code. Uh, and then your local area code. Uh, if you have additional area codes, we would uh, specify those here. You, of course, want to put your billing telephone number in. That's, that's always key to, to put that data here and on the site as well. Because if you have a phone that's, that doesn't have a DID specified or a caller ID specified in its programming or a user, this is where the short tail system is going to grab the, uh, the data to, to import or to input for their caller ID if, you know, if the user itself doesn't have one. Uh, then you'll, you know, you're, you'll also want to select the services that you want to allow for this trunk group, uh, local, long distance, international, et cetera. Um, so then once that's all selected, we'll scroll down. Uh, then we'll get to the trunk digit manipulation field. So this is one thing, and as you'll see here, with, with level three, they support what's called E164 dialing, uh, which is similar to a cell phone. Uh, you know, with your cell phone, you can call a local long distance number. You don't have to put in a one. Uh, or if you put in a one and it's not really long distance, it'll still route the call. A lot of SIP providers will support that if you, if you request it. Um, L3 or level three does it by default. So if that's the case, it, it makes your job a lot easier because now we don't have to do things like uh, you know, local prefix list or specify what's local, what's long distance. Um, It'll just it'll support it either way. It, it takes the full 11 digits on the outbound side. So if possible, that's what we definitely recommend. Uh, if not, then of course, just like with a PRI, you'll need to specify if you have a local prefix list or not. Um, and if you do have one, then then select it in the drop-down menu there. Uh, then we'll go back to the top and click save. It's a pretty simple process. Uh, from there, the, the next step is we've got to build our trunks. Um, just like uh, analog trunking, this is a very easy, easy process to do. So uh, we'll, we'll go to your back to director, to the trunks, then individual trunks. Uh, we'll select the site. Uh, in this scenario, we see it's headquarters. We select the trunk group that we just built. It's for us is here is level three. We click go. Uh, and really all you have to populate here is the name of the trunks, the switch whether it's physical or virtual, that's going to support those trunks, the, the IP address, and this IP address that we're entering here is going to be the destination that we're going to talk to. Typically, that's going to be the internal destination of the session border controller. Um, then we specify the number of trunks that we need uh, and click Save, and that's it. Your trunks are built. Um, past that, then you're going to get into you know the basic setup uh, and, and or customization of your session board controller. 
uh, and being that there are several different models of those and they all program a little bit differently, that's not something we're really going to get into on this one, but I will tell you for all of the session border controllers that Shortail supports, they have app notes on their support site uh, that you know, we could either provide for you or if you have a log yourself that take you through the basic setup um, for the session border controllers.